How do you do? Where do you go to find safety and security? Maybe you turn to family or friends, or maybe a career. Perhaps there are things that bring you comfort, shopping, eating, traveling. What happens when that safety or comfort is taken away? Or worse, what happens when you give all you have to a relationship, a substance, food, sports, work, and it still doesn't satisfy? Where do you turn? Today we'll meet a woman who learned there was only one relationship that could truly fulfill her, and that's when her heart and mind and life were unshackled. Kids, hide this right now. Hide it where? Dad! How much is it? This is the most money I've ever seen. Where are you gonna? Yeah? Where'd your father go? Um, I don't know, officer. You girls are coming with me. This is Unshackled, true life stories dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. While the city of Chicago still faces issues of violence and unrest, it's also home to Pacific Garden Mission. We are the oldest continuously operating rescue mission in the country. We have been in the city since 1877 to serve the under-resourced in our city. And every day, hundreds of men, women, and children of all ages and backgrounds seek help. We are grateful for friends like you who send financial gifts to keep the doors open. Through your gifts, God provides nourishing meals, fresh clothing, and a safe place to sleep for those in desperate need. And above all, He provides the love that can set us free. And that's what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is program number 3490 in the series, Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. Not yet, sweetheart. They haven't cooled yet. Why do you boil the pecans? Does that make them taste better? It makes less of a mess when you crack the shell. <laughs> but I like cracking them into a million pieces. Well, my floor doesn't like it, and my back doesn't like it either. You gonna bring some of these home to your dad? Maybe. I told your mom I think he might like them. All right. How was school today? Good. Thursdays are my favorite day. You know why? Why's that? Because we come to you on Thursdays. (laughs) They're my favorite, too. For the same reason. Did you give your granddad a kiss yet? I tried, but I'll try again. It means a lot to him, even if he can't say so. Yeah, I know. All right. I think these pecans are ready. Bet I can crack more than you before Mom gets here. You're on. (laughs) The woman in our story grew up in a home that would be wrecked by deceit. This is the story of how it affected her and how she overcame. Parental guidance is suggested due to the subject matter contained in the true story of Shannon McCoy, right now on Unshackled. Granny's pecan tree was something I could count on. Every fall it flourished. Every Thursday I went to Granny's and every time I hugged her, I knew I was safe. I gave out hugs like most people use punctuation marks. At the end of a sentence, in between a thought, to express pretty much anything. I grew up in Rock Hill, South Carolina with two big sisters and a little brother. Dad owned an upholstery shop and when he came home, he didn't have much energy for us. Dad, do you know my friend Carol? Why is the TV doing that again? I don't know. I was going to do cheerleading in high school, but Carol said that the cheerleaders stopped being friends with their other friends once they started... Grab me some tea, will you? Yeah. Yeah, Carol's a nice girl. But I'm saying, Carol says the cheerleaders are sort of their own group, and I'm not sure if I join or if I was one... Will you unplug that cord in the corner? Just was wondering if you had any advice about if you think I should try out... You'll be great at whatever you do. Now, plug it back in. There we go. All right. Quiet now. The game's back on. It felt like I couldn't talk to my dad about anything real. He wasn't around much, and when he was home, he just wanted us to serve him. 
I had trouble connecting with any of the men in my life. My granddad was unresponsive due to the pain from his diabetes, and my uncle was kind, but an alcoholic. I only got affection from the women in my life. But I wouldn't stop trying to get it from men. Mom, will you help me set the table? Yeah, we're uh, short a few dishes. Yes, well... I I can share with Jasmine. Thank you. Did Dad... Look, he just got a little heated last night, but we're fine. I should know by now to hide the dishes whenever I want to have a real conversation with him. This looks good. Granny's recipe. Now, did you want to talk about something, sweetheart? Remember how you told us when we're ready for... When we were ready to, you know, with a guy, we should... Can I go on birth control? Well, now I almost dropped another dish. I didn't think you want to until you were... I'm 15. Exactly. I don't understand. You told me to tell you when I'm ready, and I'm ready. I'm just trying to be safe. It's not about that, honey. Men are not always... Pills aren't enough to keep you safe. But Mom's warnings and my parents' failing marriage weren't enough to keep me away from guys. One in particular, a football player. I was a cheerleader. I love the feeling of his hand in mine, his arm around me, going places with him. I craved affection and security so badly, I could not see the problems with the way he treated me. Oh, uh, hey, Jazz. I didn't know anyone was home. Okay, excuse me while I throw up. Is that how y'all say goodbye every day? Don't be jealous. Jealous? (laughs) I want no part of you and Freddie's relationship. No, thank you. I prefer to continue on with the rest of my life and my friendships. What do you mean? When was the last time you saw Eliza? I've been busy with cheer. How about Abby? Jasmine, I've been busy with... With Freddie. I know y'all get out of the car holding hands. That's not possible. I've seen you do it. Freddie likes being together. What's wrong with that? I don't like the way he talks to you. Why did he call me last night? He just wanted to make sure I was at the mall. Did you tell him that's where you were going? Yeah, he just wanted to make sure. He doesn't let you speak. I hear the way he talks to you. Well, I'm fine with the way things are. And that's, that's what matters. I see now how possessive Freddie was, but I still excelled in high school. I ran track and won MVP of my team. I got good grades. The idea of not having sex before marriage was not given credence in my home, and I went about giving myself to my boyfriend, who made me feel special. In the background of my immature relationships, my parents' marriage was crumbling. One day, we were forced to face the reality of just how bad things had become. Kids, hide this. Right now. Hide it where? Dad! How much is it? This is the most money I've ever seen. Where are you gonna... Yeah? Where'd he go? Um... uh... I don't know, officer. Outside! Check the yard! You girls are coming with me. Wait, ma'am, I'm sorry, but we didn't... We didn't do anything. Follow me. We'll take you down to the station. Your dad's headed there, too. Why didn't you just hide the money, Shannon? My mom would have to pay taxes on the drug money I didn't hide. I still feel guilty for letting them down in that moment. And so it turned out my dad was selling drugs. I had had my suspicions with some of his shady behavior, but his arrest brought a new level of pain and humiliation to my family. Around this time, we also learned that my dad was committing adultery. The fights between my parents got scarier and more physical. I didn't understand. My mom had always taken such good care of him. Girls, I have to tell you that I... It's all right, dear. It's okay, Mom. We love you. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Your dad is a dad to some other kids, too. I know that. I didn't know that. Don't talk with your mouth full. Shannon, you're eating all my pecans. Sorry, Granny. Have as many as you want. So your father and I are obviously not not, not doing well. Mom, you have stitches on your forehead. It's not... Is that from him? I... Yes, it is. 
Are you going to leave him, Mommy? I know I'll have to, eventually. Why not now? You're all still in school. So and... what? But what I want to tell you is that I'm going to college. You are? I'm going to learn to become a surgical technician so I can, you know, support myself when the time comes. Can't come soon enough. What's a surgical technician? Wow, Mom, I'm really proud of you. So then, what about us? We'll learn what happened to Shannon and her family in just a moment. Here's the president of Pacific Garden Mission, Phil Kwiatkowski. Thanks, Timothy. I'd like to take a moment to update you on the transformational work that is happening at Pacific Garden Mission as a result of the generosity of donors like you. Our home is a state-of-the-art, 150,000-square-foot building designed by Chicago architect Stanley Tigerman. It is the first green rescue mission in America. Unique features include 100 solar panels to save on energy costs, and we also have energy-efficient heating and cooling. There are greenhouses to grow plants and supply interior and exterior gardens, as well as a landscaped inner courtyard allowing fresh air away from the streets. The men, women, and children served here live on three bright and spacious floors. We have capacity to sleep 750 men, 200 women and children, and serve them in a 600-person dining area. There are two libraries with computers and transient guest ministry day rooms for men and women. Here are some comments from those who have been impacted at the mission. James says, Before coming to the Pacific Garden Mission, I was very much a postmodern man. I was distrustful of any grand ideology, and I fully embraced the idea that there was no moral absolutes. Eventually, I realized that if I continued that way, I would die. Four states, three jobs, two engagements, and some years later, I found myself sleeping in a Chicago doorway on a stormy night. The next morning, I chased rumors and made my way to Pacific Garden Mission. The mission saved my life. Or should I say, the mission provided a safe haven, and Jesus Christ saved my life. So, I decided to join the men's Bible program. I was broken down, but here I began the rebuilding process. With good, godly counsel and sound biblical lessons from PGM staff, I finished a year of very necessary spiritual refining. Now, I pray every day to become finer, and I now know I can through the saving grace of Jesus Christ and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thanks, Jim. And Hope writes, Before I came to the mission, I was a mess. I came from abandonment. I came from abusive relationships. That was all I had known from a very young age. I turned to the streets. I turned to other people that were like me, who had been thrown away, and that nobody else cared about. This lifestyle rolled on through my late teens and early adult years, and eventually I was living in abandoned buildings which lasted 13 years. What started out as something fun grew into something very dark. My addictions also led me to doing a lot of stealing. I came to the mission to lay low after stealing something. I joined the Bible program. I got into the Word of God, and it started changing me, changing my heart, and changing my desires. He changed everything about me. If Jesus can do this for me, he can do it for anybody. Both James and Hope are now on staff here at Pacific Garden Mission. We celebrate all the work God is doing in the hearts of those who serve and are served at Pacific Garden Mission. Our budget is completely donor-funded, and we invite you to partner with us serving thousands of homeless men, women, and children this year. For more information about what you can do to help, write to us at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. That's Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. My mom eventually left my dad. I think she waited until I was in college. I was left without a place to stay. My dad was living with another woman and his other kids, and he didn't want me there any more than I wanted to be there. But I enjoyed college life. It gave me a reason to break up with my possessive boyfriend and start dating someone new. And the people there were nice. 
I started going to church with a new friend. Hey, Susan, I'm almost ready. Just finishing up stuff for Kim. You're doing your homework? We have a quiz tomorrow? It's Sunday. Well, yeah, but... You can't do homework on the Sabbath. I mean, I'd definitely rather not be, but... Well, don't tell anyone about this at the meeting. Okay, I won't. Sorry. Is it cool if we swing by the library to pick up Adam? He wanted to come to church, too. Your boyfriend? Yeah. I don't know if you should bring him. I think he'd like it. It's my family, and... I I thought I was in the family, too. You're close, and I want you to be, but I don't think you can keep seeing Adam. Wait, what? Shannon, I'm trying to help you. I just don't think... I feel like you're choosing Adam over God. Something wasn't right with Susan and her church. Eventually, I came to find out it was a cult, and I got out. It's a red flag when faith becomes all about what you can and cannot do. Truly, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. I think God used that experience to start to convict me about surrendering my whole heart to him. Not long after, another friend invited me to her church. I was cautious, but still eager to know God. What was that? (laughs) What do you mean? I have never been to a church service like that before. Like what? That pastor was so funny. And the way he talked about sin, it was like, really, just really... Convicting? Yeah. (laughs) He didn't make it all about how guilty and sinful we are. He made me excited about how I could grow in God. He's good at that. Also... Can we talk about the brothers who legit had their hands up and were singing? Got your eye on someone? No, I just, (laughs) I've never seen black men worship like that. I mean, wow. That one guy was crying. Did you see? The guy in the front? Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to go back and reread. Oh, my goodness. Did you write down everything he said? I'm a science major. I know how to take notes. (laughs) You're hilarious. But I'm really glad you were into it. Thanks for taking me, Marie. I hadn't had many examples of people in authentic relationship with God. I wanted it so badly. I was hooked. I started to become convicted about modesty. I stopped wearing miniskirts to church. I felt God calling me to stop having sex until I had found the person I would commit to forever and marry. I told Adam what I was learning and experiencing and that I didn't want to sleep together anymore. That was a deal breaker for him. But I had a newfound hope in a father who would never leave me. And I did as the pastor said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Hi God, I want a relationship with you. I want what Marie has and Pastor Paul. I want to know you the way the people at church know you. I want my body to be a home for you, and I want to honor you with it. Please forgive me for my sin. Please make me new. In Jesus' name. Jesus was becoming real to me, and it was reflecting in every aspect of my life. Our church had a 14-day consecration service. I committed my life to ministry. I felt God calling me to minister to women alongside a future husband who was also in ministry. Now, I just had to find the husband. One month later, a classmate introduced me to John. And so then I finished Bible college this past spring. And what's next? A seminary, I hope. I I just, I don't know. I, I want to be like the great preachers and thinkers I've been reading. Like who? Jonathan Edwards. Do you know him? No. The Nature of True Virtue. Oh, hang on. Let me write this down. I still have my textbooks from college. I can lend them to you. I sometimes listen to preachers on the radio. Preaching? On the radio? It's a Christian station. What? 94.8. I didn't know that was a thing. This guy seemed like the real deal. A man who loved talking about God and was serious about ministry. When he came to meet my family, my mom asked me if I was sure. After all, we had only dated for two months when we got married. But with him, I had the safety, security, and affection I had always longed for. Or so I thought. I brought donuts. Oh, goodness. 
What's the problem? Uh, nothing. I just... We had pancakes for breakfast. Yeah, well, I wanted donuts. Did you look over my website? It's hard for me to provide feedback on your website when I don't understand what happened the with... The job didn't work out. You can't just tell me you got fired and not explain why. I'm your wife. It's not important. If you'd finished seminary... Being a preacher's not going to pay our bills. Well, neither is this website consulting thing. You need a job. Will you let me try? I have let you try. And while you've been trying, we foreclosed on our house and filed for bankruptcy. While you've been trying, I've gotten pregnant. Wait, what? I gave birth to a beautiful little girl. I hoped that would change things between us, but it only made his inability to keep a job or launch a business or stay in one place all the more frustrating. He would eat more and more to stave off his true feelings. The unhappier I became, I started to copy his strategy. I spent my nights with home renovation TV shows instead of with John. Hi, I'm Eric Ellis. Welcome to How to Have the Good Life the program about people who have taken a chance to follow their dreams. When would I have the good life? What were my dreams? All I had were cupcakes, milk, cookies, soda, chips, cereal, cake, and ice cream. Years passed, and we could not hold it together financially or relationally. We were coming up late on our rent again, on the verge of being evicted. He abandoned us emotionally and financially and left to go live with his mom. And I went to my sister's place in the projects. Jasmine! There's a huge bug in the... Don't kill it. We have roaches, and when you kill them, they multiply. Ew! What? I've just always heard that. So what do you do? Just leave them. Have you called the exterminator? Yes, I'll do that just after I book my facial, massage, haircut, and take my family on a vacation. I know they're expensive. We just deal with them. Deal with what we got. The neighbors have been having a party since we moved here two years ago. Sounds like it. Hopefully the baby... She'll be fine. Do you have any snacks? It's after midnight. I know, I'm a monster, but it's the only thing that makes me feel okay. You're not a monster. You barely recognized me. Well, we've grown up. Did you visit the daycare today? Yes. What'd you think? Jazz, I can't send my baby there. Well. What am I going to do? You might have to send her there till you get on your feet. It's like the roaches, sis. We deal with what we got. I fell into a deep depression, gained a lot of weight. I felt like damaged goods. But the Lord kept after me. My sister was a great comfort. Another friend talked with and encouraged me every Sunday for two years. And church friends prayed for me and visited my daughter. I met with a pastor, studied scripture, and believed, without going into details, I had grounds for divorce. I found peace through the passage. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God hath called us to peace. A friend took my daughter to the mall so I could complete my divorce papers. I want to live, God. I want to see myself the way you see me, the way I see my daughter. I want to encourage her to grow up strong in who you made her to be. I want, oh, Father, I just want you. Thank you for never leaving me. Please help me to begin again. Something was creeping back into my life. A sense of purpose. I had always believed I could minister to other women. If God didn't see me as damaged, then my life still had meaning. Though I had fallen, I didn't stay down as the Lord upheld me with his hand. I thought of my mom going back to school when her marriage ended. I decided to study to become a counselor at a school in California. A great idea, except that I had no job, money, car, or place to live. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to post your prayer request on Stella's blog. Stella's blog is about, like, Christianity and stuff? Precisely. No, I mean it's about theology and stuff. And, and guess who reads it? Christians, 
people who might be willing and able to help you. I don't want to bother her. She's our big sister, and she'd love to help. You've done with dinner? Um, still hungry? I think I still have some Cheetos. No, I got something else. <gasps> Pecans! To celebrate where we came from and who God is making us to be. I mean, I didn't grow them on a tree or anything, but still. Oh, thanks, Jazz. Save some for the rest of us. My sister posted four prayer requests on her website to find a place for my daughter and I to live in California, to provide a car, babysitters for my daughter while I was taking classes, and for employment. Through her readership, all of those prayers were answered. We made the move and I attended college for a degree in biblical counseling. I learned there was a name for my issue with overeating and I ended up writing my thesis on it, Overcoming Gluttony. I now work as a counselor in my church, a speaker and writer. I am still a single mom and I still wrestle with my desire for finding security and affection in others. But now, instead of numbing my emotions with food, I am learning to be content in Christ. I am learning that He alone can truly satisfy. Romans 13, verse 14 tells us, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. May we all look to put on the Spirit of our Heavenly Father when we are tempted to make gods of earthly things. If you need help in making the decision to choose Christ, get in touch with Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. A listener emailed us, It is wonderful to have your excellent program on my Kindle. However you listen, we hope you tell us how these programs enrich your life. And please, thank the manager of this station for broadcasting Unshackled. This is program number 3490. Heard in the true story of Shannon McCoy were Jenna Ford Jackson, Michael Torrey, Sarah Lynn Crittenden, Brittany Baker, and Kona Burks. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound, Nadine Aloysio Sorensen. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Sound engineer, Kim Rasmussen. Script, Samantha Beach. And I'm Timothy Gregory. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today. Your letter means a great deal to us. The address, Pacific Garden Mission. 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. That's Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. You may call Pacific Garden Mission in Chicago and talk with someone who cares. 312-492-9410. Someone is waiting for your call. 312 Four nine two nine four one zero. 9410